fractions. Now this is very important as this is the last time that you're going to have formal teaching on fractions. So I'd like to quickly recap on stuff that you already know. Some of you think might think this is very elementary, but if, if you don't understand this, you're going to have problems with it for the rest of your school careers. So I want you to make sure that you understand the following. Fractions is very useful because we don't always work in holes or in whole numbers or in integers. So sometimes you have to break up a whole into little parts. And it's always useful if you can break this parts, those things up into even parts. Now, if I have a hole, and in this case, this will be a hole. In maths, when we use fractions, it is a fraction of a whole number. But they're not always the same. This half is not the same as this half. Because this is half a pizza, and that is half of those things. So, um, sometimes I refer to fractions as, as things, but it's not so, not so much a thing like a half a pizza or half a block. It is half of a whole number. Now, the first thing that we need to remember is what a fraction exactly represents. So if I have a half, there's two values. We have the numerator. We have the numerator. The numerator over the denominator. And I see some people say numerator upper, numerator, and denominator is downer. So denominator is the bottom, numerator is at the top. I like to think of this as follows. Denominator determines what fraction we are using. So it gives the name of the fraction. Um, so if we do calculations, that's the one that determines what we're going to do. So this is one part, the numerator, the number of what we have, the, the denominator that determines what fraction it is. So what we say is we have this fraction, we break it into twos, two equal sides, and therefore the denominator is two. If I break it up into three pieces, it means the denominator have three. There's three pieces. The numerator tells us how many of those pieces we have. So in this case, we have one third, and one third means we have two thirds of this fraction. So denominator is almost like the name of the fraction, determines what fraction we have. Now that is very, very basic. Um, what we need to do is we need to look now at equivalent fractions, which this topic is actually about. Equivalent fractions. Equivalent. Equivalent fractions. Now, equivalent fractions is exactly what the words say. They are equal, equivalent fractions. Now, there's no way that a half can be the same as a third, or a half can be the same as a quarter. However, if I put my ruler down the middle, we might see something that we have here. If this is a whole, if this whole thing is a whole, I have a half, which is exactly the same. One quarter and another quarter means I have two quarters. So they are exactly the same size. If I take those two, I can put it on there, and it's exactly a half. It is the same as one, two, three, sixes. It's the same as one, two, three, four, eights. It's the same as one, two, three, four, five, tenths. So they are all equivalent fractions. Now, just make sure we don't say that one tenth is equivalent to one half. We say five tenths is equivalent to one half. So what principle are we using to get these values? Well, I can see if I take this one and I multiply it by two, I get two. If I take this two and I multiply it by two, I get four. If I take this one 
and I multiply it by 3, I get 3. If I take 2 and I multiply it by 3, I get 6. So 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. And you can do that with each and every one of those. If I take 1 and I times it by 5, I get 5. If I take 2 and I times it by 5, I get 10, which gives us 5 over 10. Why does this happen? Well, if I multiply by 2 above and underneath the line, look what I'm actually doing. I say multiply by 2 over 2. And what is 2 over 2? 2. 2 divided by 2, you should know, equals 1. And I know that if I multiply by 1, I don't change the value of my with of the value. A half times 1 is a half, which means a half times 2 over 2, which is 1, is also a half. 1 times 2 equals 2. 2 times 2 is 4, which means 2 over 4 is also a half. So all I need to remember is, when I, simply, when I multiply, I or when I find equivalent fractions, when I generate equivalent fractions, I have to do above the line as I do underneath the line, because then I'm not changing the value, I'm just writing it as another fraction that has the same value. So just writing one half as two quarters as three sixes is four eighths as five tenths. Please look at the examples to see exactly how we're going to do this.